pre-test video version. We recently used a test for my son's pre-calculus class and this video will, will work out all the problems. One thing that made this test challenging for some was that there are no drawings to help the student. Problem 1. A wheel with a 26 inch radius is marked at two points on the rim. The distance between the marks along the wheel is found to be 15 inches. What is the angle to the nearest tenth of a degree between the radii to the two marks? So our main problem solving strategy for these problems in this test is to draw a picture. Here's a drawing of a wheel we'll use. From the text of the problem we see that our radius of the wheel is 26 inches so we label the radius as 26 inches. Next we mark the wheel at two points. We'll have one mark where the radius line segment is and another mark 15 inches away on the edge of the rim. And this arc length, or distance between the two points on the rim, is 15 inches. The drawing doesn't have to be perfect, but good enough to see later if we're getting a reasonable answer. Next, we bring out the arc length formula, and that's S equals R times theta, where S is the arc length, R is the radius, and theta is the angle in radians. We need to be sure that our radius and arc length are in the same units. In this case, we see that the arc length and radius are both in inches. From our drawing and from the text, we have our radius of 26 inches and our arc length of 15 inches. So substituting in the formula, we have 15 equals 26 theta. We solve for theta by dividing both sides of the equation by 26. 26 or 26 cancel to equal 1. So we bring down that theta equals 15 over 26 or 15 26 ths. So we pull out our calculator and see that 1526 is 0.576923, which round to the nearest tenth is 0 0.6. Does this make sense that our angle is 0 0.6 degrees? No, it doesn't. This number is in radians. To convert it to degrees, we need to multiply it by 180 over pi. In pressing enter, we get 33.0553 degrees. And converted to the nearest tenth of a degree, we get 33.1 degrees. And looking at our reasonable, reasonably accurate drawing, we see that our angle looks like it could be about 30 degrees or so, verifying that our answer is correct. But we set ourselves up for success by making a pretty accurate drawing. But as a check to see if my final answer is correct, I use the formula for circumference. The circumference equals 2 pi r. And multiply by the ratio 33.1 over 360. Press enter. We get very close to 15 inches as an arc length, further verifying that our answer is correct. So we box it in as correct. Problem 2. A pendulum of length 14.1 inches swings 4 degrees 57 minutes to each side of its vertical position. To the nearest hundredth of an inch, what is the length of the arc through which the pendulum swings? Here's a pendulum like there might be in a clock. It swings back and forth at a constant frequency to keep time or rhythm. And as it swings back and forth, uh, 4 degrees, 57 minutes to either side of vertical, it traces an arc. This is the arc length traced in red below. And finally, the length of the pendulum is 14.1 inches. To solve this problem, we go back to the arc length formula that we used in problem 1. And that's S, the arc length, equals the radius times the uh, theta, or radians. We have the radius of 14.1 inches, the length of the pendulum, but this number, 4 degrees 57 minutes, needs to be converted to a decimal equivalent. And here's how it's done. We have 4 plus 57 divided by 60. And when we press enter, we get 4.95 degrees. I had to convert an improper fraction into a decimal by pressing control, then enter in my T9 Inspire calculator. And to get the total angle, we need to multiply by 2. So that would give us 9.9 .9 degrees total. So we can multiply the radius by the angle. So here's 9.9 .9 multiplied by 14.1. We get 139.59. Does that sound right? No, it doesn't. 139.59 inches makes no sense. We should just have a few inches or so. The angle needs to be converted uh, to degrees. And that can be done or to radians, excuse me, for this formula. And that can be done by multiplying by pi over 180, as shown here on the calculator. When we press enter, this is what we get, 2.43631, as in 2.43631 inches. 
and following the instructions and the problem to answer the nearest hundredth of an inch, our answer is an arc length of 2.44 inches, which we box in as our correct answer. We can check our answer as we did in problem 1 by entering 2 pi r, which is 2 times pi times 14.1, times the proportion of the circle, which is 9.9 .9 divided by 360, and by pressing enter we get the same answer we got earlier, so we box in our answer is correct. Problem 3. A police helicopter is monitoring the speed of two cars on a straight road. The helicopter is at an altitude of 4,500 feet directly above the road. At one instant, the angle of elevation from the first car to the helicopter is 22 degrees, and the angle of the elevation from the second car to the helicopter is 16 degrees. How far apart are the two cars to the nearest foot? For this problem, I would definitely recommend drawing a picture of the situation. We have a helicopter. 4,500 feet in elevation, and we have two cars that the police guy is checking on. The first car has an angle of elevation to the helicopter of 22 degrees, and the second car has an angle of elevation to the helicopter of 16 degrees. To find out how far apart the cars are, we need to find the horizontal distance from the second car to the helicopter, shown by the red line segment, and subtract out the horizontal distance from the first car to the helicopter, shown here by the green line segment. In angular terms, we have the 4,500 feet as the opposite side of the angle and the horizontal side as the adjacent side. And the trigonometric ratio linking opposite and adjacent is the tangent. So for the red line segment length, we can set up the relation tangent of 16 degrees equals 4,500 divided by x. However, we can make the equation easier to solve by using the reciprocal ratio cotangent, which is adjacent over hypotenuse adjacent over opposite to become the cotangent of 16 degrees equals x over 4,500 feet. And multiplying both sides of this equation by 4,500 feet, we get that x is equal to 4,500 times the cotangent of 16 degrees. And similarly for the green line segment, we can find it by using the equation y equals 4,500 times the cotangent of 22 degrees. And here's the problem set up in the calculator. Make sure the calculator is in degrees mode and not in radians. Do that first. In pressing enter, we get a distance of 4,555.47 feet. And rounded to the nearest foot, as instructed, we get 4,555 feet. I think that I gave full credit, even if the answer was 4,556 feet, probably due to a slight premature rounding. Now for the check. The check is going to be more involved than the working of the problem because we have to look at each triangle created by the angles and then evaluate each one to see if they make sense. Here I've entered 4,500 times cotangent 16 degrees and 4,500 times cotangent 22 degrees separately. We get our larger triangle, the one formed by the blue car, with a base length of 15,693.4 feet and the other triangle formed by the red car with a base length of 11,137.9 feet. The longer base minus the shorter base is 4,555 feet round to the nearest foot. And to check each angle, we'll use the arc tangent of 4,500 over 15,693.4. And here is the first angle entered into the calculator. Press Enter. We see that we get 16 degrees. Check. We do the same process for the other angle by taking the arc tangent of 4,500 divided by 11,137.9 and pressing enter. For this angle, we get 22 degrees, again verifying our correct answer. So we box in 4,555 feet apart as our correct answer. Problem 4. A school building has a height of 45 feet. Its shadow is currently 10.1 feet long, and the shadow of the church next door is 19.7 feet long. Use similar triangles to calculate the height of the church to the nearest tenth of a foot. Here's a drawing of a school and of a church with their shadows. I did have a student who used the tangent to solve the problem. And of course, the tangent is opposite over adjacent. He used arc tangent to find the angle of the shadow of the school building, then used the angle to find the height of the church building. However, the problem itself gives us a clue to a much easier method of solution, and that is by using similar triangles. And to use similar triangles, we set up 45 over 10.1 equals x over 19.7. To solve for the height, we have to cross multiply the 19.7 feet. 
So here it is entered into our calculator. It's 19.7 times 45 divided by 10.1. And pressing enter, we get 87.7723 feet. And that gives us 87.7723 feet. And rounded to the nearest tenth of a foot, we have 87.8 feet. To check this answer, we're looking for the tangent of one angle to be equal to the tangent of the other angle. So we have the tangent uh, for the school, 45 over 10.1, and the tangent of the church, 87.8 over 19.7. We see that these tangents are very close. The reason they have any difference at all is probably because 87.8 was a rounded answer, so we box in 87.8 feet is our correct answer. Problem 5. Use the arc length formula and the given information to find the indicated quantity. Here we're given everything we need except the arc length formula, and that formula is S equals R times theta. S is the arc length, R is the radius, and theta is the angle in radians. If we replace the R with the radius of 13 feet and the theta with 36 degrees, that's all we need. For this, we'll multiply the radius 13 by the theta 36, and we get 468 which some students gave as an answer. Let's think of this and draw a picture. Here's a circle with a radius of 13 feet and an angle of 36 degrees. The angle is just an estimated drawing by me, so not exact. But look at the arc in red. Does that look anything like 468 feet? No, of course not. To convert that 36 degrees to radians, we need to multiply by pi over 180, as we set up here. And by pressing enter, we get an answer of 8.16814 feet. Uh, there were no instructions in rounding in the problem, so I accepted rounding the nearest tenth, or any degree of rounding. To the nearest hundredth, the arc length is 8.17 feet. To check, we can enter 2 pi r and 13 for r, and times the proportion of a circle, 36 over 360, we get 8.16814 again. So that checks out, and we box in our earlier answer of 8.17 feet is correct. Problem 6, which has three parts to it. Suppose that theta is in standard position and that the given point is on the terminal side of theta. Give the exact value of the indicated trigonometric function for theta. For the coordinate pair, 7, 6, we can draw the point in quadrant 1, the x value 7 and the y value 6. For the angle theta, this gives us an adjacent side of 7 and an opposite side of 6. In order to find the cosine, we need the hypotenuse, and that would be the square root of a squared plus b squared, which would be the square root of 6 squared plus 7 squared, which equals the square root of 36 plus 49, which is the square root of 85. And that's what goes on our triangle in the hypotenuse position, the square root of 85. And since the cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, this cosine is equal to 7 over the square root of 85. And this is our answer to part one, which we box in as correct. Next, for part two, we plot the point negative square root of two, comma, negative square root of 13 in quadrant three. And here we have the adjacent side labeled negative square root of two, and the opposite side labeled negative square root of 13. And since cosecant is the hypotenuse over the opposite, we'll need to find the hypotenuse. And the hypotenuse is the square root of a squared plus b squared, which is the square root of quantity negative square root of 2 squared plus the negative square root of 13 squared. So the hypotenuse of theta is the square root of 15. So our cosecant being hypotenuse over opposite reduces to negative square root of 15 over the square root of 13. And this is our answer that we box in as correct. And finally in part 3 we're asked for the secant of theta. If we are observant enough, we see that the coordinate pair 7, 6 is the same pair given earlier in part 1. Also, there is the reciprocal identity that the secant of theta is a reciprocal of cosine theta, or 1 over the cosine of theta. Therefore, the secant of theta, since the cosine of theta is 7 over the square root of 85, so the secant of theta is the square root of 85 over 7. So we box in our answers correct and circle the correct multiple choice answer B. I went over all the problems kind of quickly, but I hope that the review was helpful to you. I'm probably more experienced in doing these types of problems than all of my students and probably most of my viewers here. However, as experienced as I am, I rarely undertake such problems myself without the draw a picture strategy, even if it's drawing a very rough sketch. I strongly encourage all to do the same. This has been a trigonometry test video version. Thanks for viewing.